Welcome to the Full Armor of Game podcast episode numero 20, number 20. We're excited to end the new year with episode 20 of the best podcast that's out there when it comes to dating, relationships, women, seduction. This is the place to be, fellas. We want to thank you for joining us on this journey before we end the year. Thank you so much to all the supporters. We wanted to get a thousand subscribers and we doubled that. So hopefully the following year we can get 20,000 subscribers. We love doing this for you guys. And today we have the topic of four masculine traits that women love. So this podcast is brought to you by the czar of dating, and the one and only the texting prince, also known as Adam. You bring the crowns and heads of conquered kings to my city steps. You insult my queen. You threaten my people with slavery and death. This is Sparta! Sparta! Put on the whole armor of game. Before we start, he's going to give you a quick introductory on what we have going on before the new year. Okay, so guys, listen up. This is very important. Adam, take it away. All right, guys, we officially, all of you guys that have registered for our five-week coaching program, it starts this coming Wednesday, 7 p.m. PST, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have one last spot left for that 7 p.m. PST slot time. So if you're interested, we have all the information at the first link below in the show notes that you'll see. We got a landing page for this now. So in the future as well, when we run this, you can find all the information at that page to get in. I'm excited. Zara and I are going to spend some time after this podcast going over our kind of curriculum for the five weeks and, uh, those of you guys that are signed up and ready, just uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. You're going to get a lot of personal coaching time with us, and we're going to cover a lot of great subjects that you just won't hear anywhere else. And uh, now let's get into our topic. Mm -hmm. So why is masculinity so important? Why are masculine traits so important? Okay. Every single time I find myself in a problem when I have in a problem that I have with a woman, if I'm in a in a in a bit of um a pickle, I work to amp up my masculinity. It always works to increase the girl's attraction for me. So if I'm in a specific problem spot with any type of woman, amp up the masculinity, fellas. Masculine traits include courage, independence, assertiveness. We all know that. If you didn't know that, I don't know where the fuck you've been. You've probably been hiding underneath a rock. But you should know that by now. Previous research shows that masculine features are associated with markers of healthfulness, including upper body strength, less oxidative stress, and fewer bouts of illness. In addition, elevated testosterone levels are linked to a powerful immune system response. Masculinity is also reflected in your overall strength and size. That's why we keep preaching for you guys to focus on your diet and your fitness. There's no excuse to be fat and obese as a man anymore. That shit isn't going to cut it in 2024, fellas. If you're not in shape, if your diet isn't on point, no one is going to take you seriously in life as a man. No one's going to listen to you. No one's going to care about anything that comes out of your mouth. This is how important your fitness and diet are. So the, the first masculine trait that every man should have, if you're not at that point, you'll get there, especially when you're in a relationship or you have a girlfriend. This, I believe, is the biggest problem in men, okay? It's leadership abilities. So leadership is a display of confidence, social intelligence, risk-taking, and ambition. Leaders tend to influence others to help achieve goals, which is also a display of dominance. And Adam, you know this as well. One of the biggest issues that men have when they get in relationships is 
they start giving away those leadership abilities to the woman. They become lazy. They get too comfortable. They give their power away. And that's the downfall of a relationship. You never give your leadership abilities away to a woman, fellas. You are the driver at all times. You're behind the steering wheel. It's no one else but you. And your woman should never be behind the steering wheel. And I'll give you a great example. I'm on campus dating this beautiful feminine girl. We were already making out, having sex. She would always follow me. I wanted her to be slightly two feet behind me. And one day as we're walking, she, she asked me, she's like, where are you taking me? And I said, listen, just be quiet. Let me take control and lead the way for you. You sit back and be that beautiful feminine woman that you are. And she never brought it up again. She always trusted me to take the lead for her. Okay. What do you want to eat, babe? When they ask you that, you need to have an answer. Leadership abilities. Don't tell the woman, oh, I don't know, babe. What do you want to eat? You always make the decisions unless if the decision is something that you need to discuss with her as a whole of the relationship. Other than that, you always make the decision. Okay. And Adam's going to touch up on ambition. Because that's also part of having leadership abilities. Yeah, and actually something you brought up made me think of something that just happened last night when you talked about the leadership and giving that leadership role to women. And what is one of the most common things, it's just like a joke now, but everyone repeats it, is happy wife, happy life. And what mm. are you doing there? You're literally submitting your leadership abilities to your wife. And I was playing pickleball last night with, a uh, guy and his uh, long-term girlfriend, and then it was me and another guy. And one of the the guy I was playing with, he asked something to the other side, the the couple, and the guy answered. and the, And then he goes, "I wasn't asking you; I was asking the boss." And then the other guy right away laughed, and he goes, "Oh, he goes, I know." He goes, "He goes, I know who's in charge," and he saluted the woman he was with, like. You're my captain. You're my general. <laughs> and so it was everyone laughed. It was just like a joke. But that's like such a under like un, an overall mainstream mindset and view that a lot of guys take on and they laugh about it. Like, yep, she's the boss. We all know who runs the show. She's the boss. And that is the exact opposite of harnessing those leadership abilities. And along with this leadership thing is ambition. Um Ambition and even competitiveness is what I think of with that. Is it a guy that has ambition that's going places? He's always looking to improve. He's always looking to better himself, his situation, the people around him. That is a really attractive trait because we, we always talk about hypergamy, right? Where a woman wants a highest status man that she feels she can attain. Well, the trick with all of that is that if you're a guy that has ambition, you're a guy that has goals, you have drive, you're always looking to uh, to achieve more, you're always looking to achieve bigger goals, then think of that in the hypergamy perspective. If that girl can never pin down where your actual potential lands because you have so much of it and you're constantly improving, then you're always up there uh, it with one of the top guys that she could ever find because she never sees your your real potential. It's the guys that become comfortable with mediocrity that then those women look around and they go, this is all this guy's going to become. And that's when I, her hypergamy starts to go, well, I feel like I can do better. And then she starts to look elsewhere. So along with leadership, that ambition and competitiveness are great masculine traits to harness and sharpen in your little uh, attraction tool belt there. And 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 men that have high levels of testosterone, they have a greater sense of direction. So testosterone gives you a greater sense of direction, which means you are capable of having great leadership abilities. I'm not saying all men, just because they have high levels of test, but there's a correlation. That's why women find that man so attractive, Okay. Because the more testosterone you have, the better sense of direction you have. You know where you're going at all times. Okay, you're hiking with the girl. She says, oh my God, we're lost. Uh, what are we going to do? Babe, shut up. Follow me. I know where we're going. 
It's having that type of leadership abilities, fellas. Okay. You always know where you're going at all times. Even if you're not sure, you are confident you're going to make it out of this situation and your girl's going to follow you. She's never going to lead the way for you. You're going to lead the way for her. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and uh, another thing, and another thing before, yeah, go yeah, ahead. before, before we, we move on. Right. And you know this, Adam. Okay. A new study has shown a full 15% of women have admitted to sleeping with their boss. Okay. And I, I believe from our experience, more than half would have if the boss had wanted them and acted on it. Okay. So I think that number would have been higher if the boss actually acted upon what the woman wanted. So power is an aphrodisiac for a woman. Ambition is an aphrodisiac for a woman. Leadership ability, same thing, fellas. Well said. Uh, the second masculine trait that women are very attracted to is men that have have cultivated an abundance mindset. And this can happen in a lot of different ways. It doesn't just have to be with women, but... You know the old cliche, uh, there are plenty fish in the sea. And it's like, there's, you know, if this girl doesn't want you, there's another one out there. It's like the guys that really internalize having that abundance mindset where they're not scraping, clawing, desperation to try to get that one girl that they want because they feel that, oh, she's the only one, she's the only one for me. That becomes, it looks weak in a woman's eyes. It looks... uh it looks beta in a sense too, because it looks like, oh, he can't get all these other options. So he's sitting here holding on with clenched hands to that one option he can get. And that becomes needy to the women on the other side of that. The guys that have abundance mindset, they know that opportunities are always present. Now that doesn't just mean with women, but that means with all things in life. Something happens, a business deal doesn't go through. Well, guess what? There's plenty of other opportunities. It's not that guy's not going to sit there and beat himself up for missing out on that one opportunity because he knows there are opportunities everywhere. And having that type of mindset where you're not desperate for any one little thing working out because you have backup plans, you have other options, you're confident in yourself that you can get things done, you can find other opportunities, you can find other women. If this woman isn't working out, if she's not uh, playing by the standards and the expectations that you have, that is something that really comes off as pure confidence. Neediness is not a masculine trait. Like you were basically saying, having a scarcity mindset, that's not a masculine trait. An abundance mindset, that is a masculine trait. Uh, a masculine trait. And I, we always talk about this, right? One of the most unattractive qualities that a man can have is neediness then seeking her approval then being boring and then being too predictable but neediness if you're a needy barnacle and a girl even senses that type of thirsty needy energy from you it's game over you can't come back from that fellas neediness is something you cannot come back from and if you have a scarcity mindset listen those that are hungry do not get fed okay just as a starving person will accept almost any food and a well-fed person can be more selective, an insecure person will accept almost anyone who expresses interest, while a secure person will be more selective. And that perfectly describes why need lowers attraction. It communicates low self-esteem and that you are starving as an attention from attractive females. A man in demand simply does not have time to display any of these needy traits. So like you were saying, uh, Adam, you need to have an abundance mindset. Like that is a masculine trait. We always had things in abundance. We were never worried about one thing disappearing or one thing suddenly vanishing. We don't give a fuck because we know we can find another one. We know we have several other resources we can get. I always tell guys, how would you act? I don't want anything to be an act, right? But until you get there, right, you slowly have to start acting as if you have 30 women that are dying to be with you. You have hundreds of women that are calling you every month just to hang out with you. You need to have that mindset because when you walk around with that type of confidence, other women sense that. They know the, the guy that gets women. They know who that guy is by the way they carry themselves. 
and they never have a scarcity mindset. Okay. That's definitely not a masculine trait. If you have an abundance mindset, you have multiple options with, with women or opportunities in life. It allows you the freedom to be a risk taker. And we know that high risk gets you high reward. So being able to say edgier things to women, being able to put your foot down, being able to have standards and enforce them, that is so much easier when you have an abundance mindset, when you have other options, because you're not scared, you're not playing safe, you're not worried about losing one. And that is in turn attractive to women, kind of that bad boy vibe. So even if you are with one woman, but you have this abundance mindset, then you're able to act in ways that you should be acting and able to enforce those boundaries because you know what you expect, you know you the treatment that you expect. And if it doesn't work out with this girl, it's not going to freak you out and, and throw your life off because you go back into the ocean of different women and find a new one, but you're not allowing her to dictate you to play scared. And I like that you said risk taker because women are attracted to men that do take risks. So results showed in a study um, of women who rated the attractiveness of risk takers. So the results showed that women said they would be more attracted to men who engaged in hunter-gatherer risks, the kinds that were similar to risks faced by ancestral humans. So they love men that are risk takers. That's always going to be another masculine trait, which was a, a very great point that that you said. Um so my next masculine trait, okay, masculine men are very unapologetic. They're unapologetic. Just think about Donald Trump, okay? Whether you're Republican or Democrat, we don't care. We're just using Donald Trump as a great example because usually we do use him as a great example. So he's very unapologetic. He says what he means and he means what he says. And women find that very, very attractive. OK, he's brutally honest, but yet he's also selective with his honesty. So what do beta males and nice guys always do? They always apologize. If you really pay attention, nice guys apologize to women all the damn time. They apologize for everything. And this has been proven to be seen as weak. So guys that feel they have more sexual value than the girl never. Never apologize. Never. If you say something as a man, this is my opinion, you should never apologize for it since it already came out of your mouth. You should know what you're going to say before it comes out of your mouth because we're not acting out on our emotions as men. I've been there in the past where I said some cutthroat things that hurt the girls I was dating because I said those things out of emotion. I wasn't calculated with it. But as a masculine trait, you always want to remain stoic. Do not act out on your emotions. Now, if you don't act out on your emotions, that means you thought about what you said logically. It came out of your mouth. So why would you apologize for that? Okay, say what you mean, mean what you say, own up to it. So always try to stay grounded. Now, if you really fuck up, apologize. Okay, but that should be very rare. If you don't believe me, the next time you have an argument with a woman, what I want you guys to start doing is start apologizing a lot. See what happens. She will likely begin attacking you even more. She will also withdraw from you more. But if you hold your ground and you look stronger and hence trigger attraction, a girl does not have to like you to sleep with you, fellas. She just has to feel attraction. So hold your ground. Makes When you hold your ground as a man, it makes you look stronger. OK, which means you're triggering attraction. You're not apologizing like the weak, nice guy or the beta male for everything that comes out of his mouth. That's very repulsive. We keep telling you women are not attracted to men who display weakness. They're attracted to men who display strength and men who display strength, which is another masculine trait. They do not apologize. They're unapologetic. You give her that look like, yeah, I just said that. What are you going to do about it? But you never take it back, fellas. Never apologize, never take it back if you're dealing with women. If it's your family members, friends, co-workers, and you say something messed up, go ahead, apologize, okay? But never to a woman you are dating. 
Yeah, so a, a good point you just brought up too when you mentioned the Trump thing about say what you mean and mean what you say is that flip floppers can't be trusted. You say one mm. thing and all of a sudden you apologize. I shouldn't have said all, all that. And now you're you're saying one thing, doing something else, and now you're a flip flopper. And what happens then is now the woman can't discern whether to believe you now. She can't believe your word doesn't have that same value to her anymore because, well, one day you say this, the next day you say I was wrong, I shouldn't have said that, and you're going back and forth, and now you're a flip-flopper. Flip-floppers are indecisive, and we know that women are attracted to decisive men, men that make decisions quickly, and they stick to those decisions. So when you're constantly flip-flopping, a really simple, easy example I give guys is like if a girl asks you your favorite color and you said purple, like that's my favorite color. And if a girl is like, oh, that color, oh, that's such a, that's a girly color. That color stinks. Green's way better. And the, if the guy's like, oh, actually, yeah, you're right. Pur I actually, I actually really do like the color green. It's like she no longer can trust anything you say because you're folding. You're folding to any type of pressure rather than just standing your ground and be like, no, purple's obviously the best color in the world. I'll debate that with anybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, what's your favorite color, by the way, Zar? A black. black. Oh, I like that too. Black, like black, black, black. And whenever, whatever, I wear a lot of black uh, outfits, especially to the gym and out. So girls always ask me, like, why do you always wear black shirts or why do you always wear black pants? And I tell them because that's my favorite color, like my soul or my heart. And I give them that look. Instantly, instantly <laughs> yeah, gets a I, smile. And I agree. Them. I like the color black, but it, I'm not going to be like, oh, actually. No, Yuzar, you convinced me my favorite color is black now. Oh, mm -hmm. you're you're right. Purple stinks. Black's the best. Those yeah, are but, actually I'm wearing both of those colors. Those are great colors. Black you are. And it's also your favorite team's color. So the Vikings. The yeah. Minnesota Vikings. That makes it easy. Yeah. But but honesty also, it doesn't mean being an open book. A lot of guys believe that being honest means you're an open book. You tell a woman everything. No, it just means that you are very congruent with your life. Okay. So if you say you don't date girls that are covered in tattoos. You had better not be dating girls that are covered in tattoos. Okay. You're congruent with what you say what, with what comes out of your mouth. So, you know, most people say they're honest, Adam, but let's be honest. They're lying about that. Okay. They're all lying about that. Like you can't hope that you are the prize. You have to know it. So when you're communicating with the girl, being honest will be felt as congruent and trigger attraction. Being dishonest is felt as deception, and it triggers danger alerts in her mind. You cannot be deceptive, fellas. I've went up to a girl with brutal honesty, and I flat out told her, wow, you have amazing tits. Right? Like, brutal honesty. Who gives a fuck? High risk, high reward. And I ended up sleeping with her that night. Okay? Drinks were involved. We're having a good time. But... You know, guys, just be selective with your honesty. Be brutally honest. And you know what? That line works so much better than, oh, can I buy you a drink? Works 10 times better. Wow, you have amazing tits. And that'll always like that would always work better than buying a girl a drink <laughs> at the bar. <laughs> Hands down. So I like that you said the selective honesty too, because yeah. on one hand, we can say guys being honest about their intentions or whatever is you know, masculine trait because you're just being out there and saying what you want, but it's selective honesty. It's like there's certain things you shouldn't say to your boss, even if it's something that you might think because it's not smart or strategic to say that in the same way. Mm -hmm. If you're a guy that is fearful about something, you have anxiety or you're feeling sad about something. Those are not the honest things that you want to bring up to women. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to, they want you to be that, that, that pillar of strength in her life. She wants you to be that rock. So being honest, like that, I'm afraid. I, I don't know how people teach it, but with so many people going to therapy these days, I'm afraid that guys are getting the wrong idea about, yeah, you have to be so honest and be open and honest with her and communicate your feelings and all that. But it's like, uh, I see so many times posts like this or guys message us about like, well, I, I was just trying to tell her how I feel and I cried in front of her and all of a sudden, she looked at me differently. She wanted to break up with me. It's like, yeah, being honest about everything in your world is not, it's, it's not for everybody. There's things, there's certain things that you need to hold in, work on yourself, or maybe talk to your male buddies about it and try to figure out a game plan. But there's 
certain things that you're not supposed to be honest to women about. They don't want to hear about your fears and insecurities and all that. They want you to be Superman in a sense mm -hmm. to where there's someone that they can always look up to. Yeah. And Kanye West is a great example. I love the guy, but he doesn't have selective honesty. He just says what comes to the forefront of his mind. And that's not masculine. Like you have to be able to control what you say, fellas. You can't just be saying all these things, offending certain people, disrespecting others, even though you believe you're being honest about what you're saying. That's not selective honesty. That's just being very reckless. That's acting out on your emotions. And that's being very stupid in the end. Very stupid. Yeah. And the fourth, the fourth trait I have about masculine traits that women love is I call it, I, I say like non-reactivity. Um, but another way you could say it is um, being in control of your emotions. You're not never getting way too high. You're never getting way too low. You're steady. You're not so reactive to things that happen to you, circumstances that happen. Uh, if you're with a girl, you say something to her and she says, oh, I didn't like how you said that and all that. And then all of a sudden you get reactive and you start apologizing. Oh, I shouldn't have said that, all that. That becomes, you're not holding that emotionally steady line. You're being too reactive. If a girl says, hey, I like you. And all of a sudden you send her, uh, oh, I like you so much too, in all caps and a bunch of exclamation points. And you're just this really high energy, so reactive to her comment to you. That becomes a little repulsive to women. They want a guy that is emotionally steady, like James Bond, you could say. Other things that happen, you're driving in, in your car and you get a flat tire. Okay. Oh, well, I'll figure out a way to deal with this. You don't freak out, call everyone on your phone, go, my day just got ruined. I got a flat tire. Life is unfair and all that. Like That's being so reactive to situations. You're able to to control your life, your world. Things will be thrown at you, but how you react is everything. So when something happens to you that you don't like, instead of freaking out, take a deep breath and just lo try to logically process it before reacting, never getting way too high, never getting way too low, being steady because you can take on and attack all sorts of big challenges in your life without being uh, overtaken by them. Yeah. And, you know, I tell you guys all the time, right. And I bring up my ex-girlfriend where I acted out on my pent up emotions. I didn't control my emotions. So what I was saying was very hurtful instead of taking, taking some time to, to think about what I wanted to say, calming down and thinking rationally, like, okay, what should I say? How can I handle this situation where I don't offend her? I don't look like I'm an emotional beta male who can't control his emotions, who's very volatile. How can I figure this out? And a lot of you guys get caught up in situations where instead of taking the time to calm down and to think about what you're going to say when you find something out about your girl or if she sends you a certain text you don't approve of, it doesn't sit right with you. Fellas, take a breather. Think logically. Because when you text a girl back based off of your emotions and you're really amped up, you're going to say certain things that you can't ever take back. And that's why me and my girl broke up. At that point, that's it. It was broken. And you guys know that story. I, I was seeing the guy from our physics two class leaving flirty comments on her social media pictures, talking to her in a way that I didn't approve of, leaving her heart emojis flirting with her just being being a fucking cornball like you could tell he was really attracted to her he was trying to to get with her and i i freaked the fuck out and i messaged her and i said hey listen if this person messages you again or if he leaves a comment again that's disrespectful to me i'm gonna knock him out right and it just it, it led from one thing to another okay so i told her i'm gonna tell him i'm gonna message him to stop fucking messaging you and to stop leaving comments. And she said, no, you're not my father. I can handle it. And I said, well, go ahead, then fucking handle it then if you're such a big girl. And it, it just turned into such a heated argument and I could have handled that situation so much better, fellas. So much better. We had amazing makeup sex that night. 
but but still the relationship was already over at that point okay so you know control your emotions like adam said you have to think rationally as a man and i learned from that situation i don't ever send out a text or i don't say something that i don't think logically of i don't think rationally of okay i'm never going to say something that's based off of my emotions anymore yeah and and that's the beauty too of something like texting is that if you're still working on getting you know less emotionally reactive in person, it's hard to hide than when something happens. But on text, there's no excuse because mm -hmm. you have the time to sit there and think about it, take your deep breath and rationalize it before freaking out and sending it. So when you're getting emotional in text, too, that's bad because, too, that's written proof of your emotional, you know, just jumping around because she sees that she can look back at that text anytime. So there's really no excuse for emotionally texting once you learn this as well. And even going back to the podcast we just did last episode about the evil side of women, how women have been armed with with that being psychological ninjas. They're armed with that being able to get in a guy's brain and kind of pull it apart and twist it and turn it, whereas men have that physical strength. So because women have that kind of superpower, when you get emotionally reactive or you get so emotional with women... That is, again, it's like her gaining dominance on you because in her field, she's so good at be about playing those, those psychological levers on you that if you react to them and you take her bait, in a sense, she's winning. She's like, okay, look at this. This guy can't even handle her himself. And then she almost is encouraged to play with fire and push it further and further just to see what's going to happen. And that, that's a, an area you don't want to be in. And, and when women say they feel unsafe with certain guys, well, if men are physically bigger and stronger than women and they can't control their emotions, now a woman does actually have a legit reason to be fearful of these guys and not feel safe because if she says something and that guy gets reactive, then bad things can happen. So in order practicing this, this kind of emotional steadiness, non-reactivity, is very, very powerful, and it makes women comfortable to be around you. Yeah, and I failed the congruency test as well, because up until that point, I was this smooth, stoic, alpha, masculine male that she loved. And then all of a sudden, that's it. It just shattered very quickly. And the same thing happened to Will Smith when he slapped Chris Rock. He was acting out on his emotions, but that's not the person that he is. And that's why it didn't work. And Jada kept shaking her head because she knows Will Smith ain't that guy. A lot of a lot of people miss that point that that's not Will Smith. Like Tupac would have been that guy because yeah. that's that's him being congruent with who he who he was. But Will Smith was so incongruent because he goes home and he's still a bitch. OK, he's still that puppy dog. So it, it, it actually made it worse. In my opinion, when you act out on your emotions like that, it makes it worse. OK, yeah, it, that's a great that's a, worse. It's a great example, too, because in the media, everyone can look at Will Smith as like that smooth, confident, charismatic guy. He, it shouldn't be a guy that gets all emotional and reactive. It seems like he has everything. He has his life going on. Mm -hmm. But then when he reacts like something like that, you can tell there's so much insecurity in that. You can tell there's there's something he can't just handle on his own. He he totally let his emotions get the best of him. And everyone then started to know, OK, something's going on at home, too, for him to react like that. And that's that same thing with with women being able to test men to really figure out because there's so many guys that can be the fake alphas, the fake players that put on the good show but if she can play with your emotions a little bit and get you to react, then she goes, yep, no congruency. He mm -hmm. was faking it. He was a fake alpha. He's not really as masculine as I thought he was because I just got that reaction out of him. Look how easy it was to throw him off his center. And another thing, Adam, they use that as ammo. So now they know what really pushes your buttons. And now they're going to use that as ammo. They're going to put that in their back pocket. They're like, oh, so... He gets jealous if another guy leaves uh, flirty comments on my Instagram pictures. Okay, now I know how to now I know how to really get him. Okay, so you guys have to be careful. It's like the the story of Samson and Delilah.
Don't ever let them know where your strength comes from. Remain stoic. Don't show weakness. Don't express yeah. your feelings. Don't act out on your emotions. No matter how beautiful the girl is, you got to be on point. Put on the full armor of game, right? We got to make that a Bible verse. We got to come up with our own Bible verse with that one. I know it's Ephesians. I think I forget. It's Ephesians something in the Bible where it says put on the full armor of God. But we have to come up yep. with our own. Put on the full armor of game. <laughs> maybe some maybe some listeners can help us out with that. Yeah, yeah. If you guys can help us out with a cool verse and, um, you know. Okay, so let, let's go to the next one. I don't want to sound too blasphemous, but. Oh, right, well, um, we just got four. Yeah. Do you have any? Uh, you have I, have, I have one more. Yeah, I have okay, one let's more. Do one. Okay. All right, we're going to make this five then. I'll put that in the title. Five. I, I really want to touch up on this because I think everyone overlooks this one trait is being disagreeable. Now, hear me out, fellas. By disagreeable, I do not mean being obnoxious or unpleasant. No one wants to be around those people. But being disagreeable means that these men are willing to take social risks to do things that others might disapprove of. So as human beings, we are hardwired to seek the, the approval of those around us. We're hardwired to do that. So the person that's disagreeable, he doesn't care a whit for what others think of him. That's disagreeableness. We don't seek the approval of anyone, especially not women. So if, if your strength and confidence comes from what another person thinks of you, let alone a girl, then your world can be shattered on a whim. There's no stability or security in people that seek approval. So my theory is this, okay? The alpha or simply, simply the mentally masculine strong man they didn't follow social norms, okay? They broke social norms, which looks brave, confident, and they trigger attraction, okay? Just, just like Donald Trump, he knows how to break social norms. That's why people love him. They can't wait to tune into what he has to say. They always, all eyes are on him. They love that man. So whatever perception you have of Donald Trump, he is the alpha male, because he does this. He's very disagreeable. He doesn't seek anyone's approval. He doesn't care what anyone thinks of him. And he knows how to break social norms. I'm not telling you to break the law. No. Okay. But you go against the grain of what society tells you is right or wrong or, and what you should do. And what's politically correct to say. Okay. That's what, what I'm talking about here. Yeah, exactly. Just like you said, disagreeable. It's, you can disagree with social norms you can disagree with things that it, it's being a free thinker in a sense too it's like oh everyone told me i'm supposed to do it this way why wait hold on why convince me i have to do that this way i'm not just gonna follow along like a sheep and do what everyone else is doing just because disagreeableness also it has a an impact on your earning capabilities, the way the the places you can go in life, because if you're disagreeable, you're not going to if you if someone's trying to pay you something, you disagree, you think you're worth more than that. And you're disagreeable. Now you can actually get promoted or you can go bigger places because you're not afraid to mm -hmm. ruffle some feathers. You're not afraid to stick up for yourself. You're not afraid to take risks like we talked about earlier so disagreeableness is also with women it's a challenge instead of so many guys being betas and sims and following along with what the woman wants what the woman expects disagreeableness is like all right i know that you expect every other beta to take you out on some fancy dinner date you know whatever it's like well guess what i'm not going to do that and when me me saying that to a girl something like that that is something that she's like, wait a second, why? This is interesting. This is not like every other guy. This is fun. This is a challenge. Now I'm going to have to put on my A game to get this guy because he's disagreeable. He's not just going to go along with everything I do and say. So it sparks curiosity, mystery, and attraction. Yeah, and Jordan Peterson actually has disagreeableness as one of the traits that determines whether or not you're you're going to be successful. So he claims that being disagreeable means that if you're an innovator and you want to create new ideas or you want to do something that others tell you is stupid or it'll never work, or you start 
listening to the criticism of your family members or friends, that innovator is never going to make it in life. They're going to hold them back because he cares what others think about him. You know what? They're right. This is stupid. Okay. But innovators like me and you, Adam, we're not saying we're some geniuses, but <clears throat> we got a lot of flack for doing social media content with dating advice for women. I heard it from my family members. I lost friends. I lost people I knew. Family members don't even talk to me anymore. But if I cared about what they thought, oh, I would have never made it this far. You would have never made it this far. Okay. That's how easy it is to be programmed by the beta mind programming. And you start seeking people's approval. But who gives a fuck what they think? Are they paying your bills? Are they helping you make it in life? Or are you going to grab the bull by the horns and say, no, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm destined to do. And I'm going to prove them wrong. Okay. Yeah. I steer. I steer my own ship. I'm behind the wheel of the car that I drive. No one else. That's how you guys have to be resilient. So if there's something you guys want to do, who gives a fuck what anyone else thinks? And you know this story too, Adam. I think a lot of other people know this story, how I got fired from my corporate job, had nothing to do with my work ethic. I found out through the grapevine that the Karen of a manager fired me because she found my social media and she didn't like what I was doing. She couldn't even be honest with me. And that fucked with me for a week straight until I found out the real reason because I knew something wasn't right. So I had a decision to make. Do I give this up and try to work for corporate America again? Or do I just keep going, proving all of them wrong and not caring about the criticism, not caring about seeking their fucking approval? Yeah, well, and I'm happy. In... I'm, yeah, I'm happy where we are right now because I kept going. And I, and I do want to just uh, end with agreeing again with what Zar said earlier about disagreeable does not just mean being obnoxious. I have some buddies that have heard this type of advice around women and now they're like a little second grader just trying to disagree with everyone on everything just to try to like make a statement but it's just like pointless and people are just just get frustrated with guys like that because they're just poking the hive that annoying little kid to poke just to poke disagreeableness is like knowing what you're worth knowing what you want knowing your preferences and if somebody challenges on them, you're not afraid to defend them. You're not afraid to say your side of the story. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't mean literally going, well, everyone's doing this. I'm going to do the opposite because then you just become a weird social outcast if you're just going around trying to be disagreeable in every situation. But it's knowing what you want and then not just being so easy, easy to surrender your own expectations, your own wants and preferences for everyone else around you. It's having that common sense to question things, but not just being obnoxious for the sake of being obnoxious. Exactly. Yeah, find that right balance, people, uh, fellas. No one wants to be around a miserable, obnoxious person who uh, who's unpleasant to be around. That's not the message we're sending here, okay? But if anyone tells you you can't do something or that's a stupid idea, or you're facing criticism, do it. Keep going. Don't stop. Obviously, within legal rights. Don't do anything stupid. Okay, <laughs> yeah. be smart about it. Be calculated. Okay, we love all of you guys. Yep, all right. Thank you guys for listening. I just realized this podcast will be coming out Tuesday. So as of right now, there's one spot left. You'll have to check out the link for the landing page if you want to join that five-week coaching package. It's going to be awesome. And uh, those of you guys that uh, are already on board, we will be talking to you real soon. In fact, by the time this podcast goes out, we'll be talking to you, to you tomorrow night. Yeah, mm -hmm. tomorrow night will be the first one for this new group. Look, looking forward to it. And we're going to hold your hand and walk you through from beginning to end. The approach, the attraction, the comfort building, all the way down to seduction. And then how to keep her properly. Yes, so. and there's never there's never a bad question. I 1 million percent would rather have a guy be honest with me, tell me, hey, I don't really know what this means. Hey, here's what I've been doing. Or they go, hey, I sent these really beta text messages mm -hmm. and not being scared to show them. I never judge a guy because I know where you came from. I know how I started. Just like me and Zar both know what it feels like to be completely helpless amongst women. So yeah, we're going to be brutally honest with you, but 
we're going to be gentle with where you're coming from. And we're going to try to meet every guy where he's at and then make sure that he moves up and increases mm -hmm. and gains skills and valuable traits that will serve him for the rest of his life. Yeah. And make sure you follow us on Instagram support at czar of dating C Z A R of dating. And also the texting prints at texting prints support us. If you have any great emails, send it to us. Our emails are in the description as well, fellas. So if you have good stories that you think other men can learn from, okay, we will read them in the beginning of certain podcasts and we will give you guys the solution. We'll go over it in detail. That's how much we love you guys. Yep. All right. Take care, guys. See you next week. Take care.